Yeah. See, JSO Musa should be introduced to postgraduates. We should do a half a day session for postgraduates for writing this thing. Some shakes that as IAP plan, you can do that. Good morning, respected teachers, dear friends. The topic is I like to thank the organizers for the opportunity. The topic is management of dengue in primary care setting. That is very, very important because. More number of patients are treated in primary care rather than secondary and tertiary care. Number one, if you want to make a strategy to improve the outcome, it should start from the primary care. So I'm going to talk on these subheadings, basic facts. You see, dengue, what lab test you should plan? Can it treat him as OP or needs a hospitalization? I have to decide how to counsel the parents, how to transport. Of course, we are in a complex situation. A child coming with four days fever, we have to think about so many illnesses, right? From malaria, typhoid, dengue, lepto, scriptifers. Really feel that we are in a very unfortunate situation. I also feel jealous about the doctor practicing in UK and US because he'll be concerning only on two illnesses, flu and HN1 only. He doesn't have to think about all these illnesses. That is a tricky situation for us. This is a paper published from one of the hospital in Singapore. They have just provided the statistics of 15 years statistics of the hospital. I will take the one, the last one. The primary mainly treated as outpatient, 64 patient, 64 percent of the dengue children are treated as outpatient. 36 were treated as inpatients. Among the 36 percent, only 1.3 percent is treated in PICU. That means a good number, almost two thirds of the children can be treated in, in the primary care setting. What is primary care? It's mainly a single person clinic or a PHE. Or it might involve also a secondary care where a smaller hospital without PICU. So primary care means PHE, small clinic as well as small hospitals. So two-thirds can be treated very well there. So WHO 2009 simply categorized into dengue without warning signs, dengue with warning signs and severe dengue. Dengue without warning signs it's the ideal place to treat is the primary care setting in the PHC or in the clinic. Dengue with warning signs probably can go to smaller hospitals. Severe dengue has to be admitted in IC only. So what is the strength and weakness of the primary care pediatrician? We'll take Amal Raj. Amal Raj is a primary care pediatrician. What are the strengths? He has belief in the clinical examination because everything he has to make, even pneumonia he has to diagnose initially by clinical examination. And he's willing to listen to the parents. He can see the child, he has got option of seeing the child twice a day because he's practicing twice a day and nearby parents can reach him faster than for a secondary and tertiary care. They have a strong belief in him because he's available at least six by seven days every day is available. The problem for him is no good lab backup, no IP facilities. Reaching the hospital is difficult. If you make a diagnosis of a severe dengue in shock, shifting to higher center is a very, very difficult job. So what he should do is you should take a wide safety margin. If he thinks the child is going to be sicker, I think better to refer earlier. Lab test, he has to choose which is reliable. And uh, displaying a dengue note in his notice board in the clinic be very useful. I used to put a notice board saying that if you buy in red spots and cold extremity, cold limbs, please bring it faster, don't wait. Many mothers will identify a small red spot in the thigh or in the gluteal region that will reduce our timing of examination also. Rule of 95 and 5, 95% of the children they recover without much supplements. Only 5% go into problem requiring hospital care. If you want to refer the child, refer early and communicate to the doctor where you are going to refer, center where you want to refer. So how do you think the dengue, a child coming with four days fever, the mother will, as soon as she enter into the clinic, she will ask, doctor, where can it be dengue or not? Neither clinical examination nor investigation can prove at that time. It's only a Environmental evidence, potential season between July to February, local epidemic, everybody started seeing dengue, high fever, flushing, rash, and absence of infective. Because these are all the simple clues to think that child could be dengue. It is supplemented by CRP, innocent antigen, IgM, and different timing, time frames. Nowadays, there are a lot of papers are available giving clues and scoring systems to assess whether the child needs to be hospitalized. One of the scoring systems which we have formed yet to be published. This is called the PDID Dengue Severity Scoring System 11. It has got 11 parameters starting obesity, warning signs, urine output, major bleed, 
saturation response to crystalloid delta hematocrit rise that means for high uh, rise in the hematocrit or delta platelet fall are transaminases based on that the scoring we given as 0 1 and 2 if the scoring tot exceeds 7 definitely the child needs hospitalization this will be a very good score but it has to be tried in many centers up to see the practical applicability any child coming to the hospital how to play the video any child coming to the clinic probably we have to assess the physiological state irrespective of the cause child coming to the clinic or op practice we can apply the pulse knowledge to decide the physiological contact the child comes inside child has a good eye contact so in the pediatric asthma triangle child is alert then he move to move to the b i have asked my attendant to remove the shirt when the child comes inside of course we can't do it in an older child i have enough time to look at the chest to see any retractions noisy breathing i can count the rate and establishing friendship i can feel the dorsal speed is pulse and capillary full time probably it took only hardly 1 minute for me to decide whether the child is sick or not alert child stable respiration stable perfusion this doesn't need more uh, further examination to decide the child is sick or not this is the first thing to be done in any child coming to a clinic or hospital wherever it is assessment of the physical status is the most important one then after that we can go for a overall assessment then you can ask about history better to write date of onset of fever 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 onset than july 1st rather than 4 days 5 days fever because july 1st because time dengue always follow the calendar better to put the date of onset of the fever that will be very useful to decide the child can go into critical phase or not quantity of intake how much child has taken feeds urine output that is how many time child has voided urine when child coming to our clinic or hospital can ask when the child last voided urine it's a big difference between a child who has voided urine 8 hours back and 1 hour back change in the mental status looking for warning signs when examine the child like avpu is a simple tool to assess the mental status hydration status heart rate pulse volume respiratory rate work of breathing saturation gently feel the abdomen for tender abdomen hepatomegaly ascites look for the rash in bleeding manifestations so tonicitis even though it is a simple one it is very very useful even in a colored skin like me we can identify good uh, rashes after the tonic aspect which will be very helpful to decide the child has got increased capillary permeability after this we decide the phase whether the child is in the febrile phase critical phase or recovery phase we also decide the severity as to the who 2009 or child dengue without warning sign with warning signs or severe dengue of course uh, scrub type is a very close mimic of dengue we can see different types of scar in different places back of neck umbilicus scrotal region in the left inguinal post auricular pre auricular genitalia all these places better to strip the child of course behind the screen to look for the scar the presence of scar completely decides the management which will be totally away from the management of dengue so simple case scenario the 5 year old child is brought to the hospital brought to the primary care pediatrician say amal raj on third day of fever he suspect dengue strongly suspect dengue and asked for investigation and his ns1 is positive now the parents ask we can we don't want to go to the hospital because child looks better we are prepared to come to meet you twice a day they give the option if there is an option we are prepared to come and meet you twice a day in the clinic itself so that you can manage the child with uh, your own advice we will manage the child so both parents request the uh, primary care pediatrician doctor follow up the child in our patient department of course he take all the precautions that his child doesn't have warning signs or signs of severe dengue on eighth day he discharged the child from his op follow up and uh, he became more confident and parents were terribly happy because they need not have to admit a child they saved around 4 into 3000 12000 rupees they have saved so this cannot be done in a very half hazard manner we have to have a proper record this is a simple format of a record it does make only a clinical clues name date of onset of the fever underlying illness ns1 antigen so we the child comes to us on fourth day till eighth day we can do eight follow ups on morning and evening so i given eight eight rows warning signs intake intake mean just mention how many times urine frequency five times child voided urine heart rate pulses crt avpu if at all any lab so this will be very good documentation even if something goes wrong also it will protect us it will also guide us whether the child is deteriorating or improving so we are going to see the child morning and evening eight times 
and after eighth day we can say the parent that the child need not come to us this will be very very useful one when you decide to have a child then op follow up how to recognize dengue shock early because dengue shock is a very serious illness but it's a very silent disease cardiac shock the child has respiratory distress so parents can identify septic shock comes with a high fever and alter conscious again this is easily identifiable diarrhea severe dehydration parents see the child is passing large amount of stools all these are give some warning but dengue shock doesn't give any warning child is quiet silent disease child may be in shock child may be in hypotensive shock quietly tachypneic alert but lying down make it a habit to touch and assess the peripheral perfusion i used to see many teach many of our teachers like professor gopal professor namalwa touch the child every time they touch a child it takes less than a minute to assess the five parameters only trained human being can perform this function none of the multi channel monitors purchase for few lakhs what five parameters are pulse volume and rate fall at the feet of the child feed the dorsal speed is count the rate capillary ripple time color and temperature of the extremities respiratory rate avpo this can be done only by a trained willing hand rather than a multi channel monitor for a hospital child child is in a small hospital this will be a very simple chart to follow monitor at least four times a day once one occasion we had two deaths subsequently in the same week so government sent a team of doctors to assess whether we had managed the child properly the team came and asked us how many times you see the child in your ward we showed the chart they were very happy because they need not write a big notes it contains date timing probably 8 am heart rate respiratory rate blood pressure pulse volume capillary ripple time avpo intake fluid output if you did the do the lab pcv plate will come look for the bleed this parameter will take only hardly 2 to 3 minutes for any resident to assess they make record you need not write a big notes so at least 3 to 5 minutes they can finish off four to five times they see the child so that even the child develop shock the shock may not last beyond five days beyond uh, six hours coming to lab test very tricky because lab test every lab test is costly if you write only cbc crp ns and antigen probably each one letter cost 100 rupees it comes to 1000 2000 rupees c mean 100 rupees or another 100 rupees like that very difficult you have to choose the investigations crp is very useful to decide whether it's a viral or a bacterial negative mostly seen in dengue positive means bacterial infection very less likely to be dengue positive in a tropical infection may be scrub typhus or leptospirosis or typhoid ns surrounding ns and antigen positive only been in second fifth day fifth day it may become negative so that they cannot say that it is not dengue igm will be started positive between fourth and fifth day to up to 12 weeks combination of ns and igm is found to be quite useful in the first five days highest sensitivity beyond four days cbc generally expected is leukopenia related lymphocytosis high pcv and low platelet count transaminases usually transaminases are routinely done why you have to do transaminases it indicates a tropical infection maybe dengue typhoid the transaminases are raised there are only two possibilities tropical infection like dengue malaria typhoid leptospirosis strep typhus or viral hepatitis so this will be narrowed on the diagnosis one simple clue is that in dengue scot is more than scpt our earlier days when we were all practice in 90s we used to rely more on x ray chest and ultrasound now it is not possible because we don't give fluid at all in most of our kids so we will never see a pleural fluid on the right side unless child receive iv fluids so even ultrasound and chest x ray may not be very useful in the initial phases so this is a case near where a child is being followed up in the op 8 year old boy high grade fever for 4 days on day 4 of illness child is ns1 positive leukopenia parents and doctor decided to treat the child as outpatient poor management of the telecommunication maintain hydration warning signs should be explained to the parents better to give only paracetamol however much the parents pushes us to the corner never use nsaid ibuprofen all this mefenamic acid are very dangerous in the presence of dengue sick only to paracetamol the right dose 10 to 50 mg per kg per dose we try to review the child once or twice in a day till 7th or 8th day if the child is okay in home monitoring is if the child is taken feeds three times a day no mother will accept that my child has taken good amount of feeds so they don't ask about the amount of feeds the child take more than three times feeds he has taken liquid more than 10 times because we tell them to give at least half or quarter tumbler of uh, soup or buttermilk or rasam to give every half an hour one hour at least the child is able to take 10 times a day is a good intake the child is avoiding urine more than five times a day he is lying down the bed but still watching the tv of course screen time do not consider here 
that means he is conscious if he does this probably can continue op treatment if he does not do this then probably we have to think whether we have to reassess the child that send the child for hospitalization indication of admission any child with warning signs features of severe dengue dengue with co infections underlying illness with covid like a child with diabetes child nephrotic syndrome very anxious parents are coming from a longer distance definitely better to hospitalize of course op treatment is very simple ensuring dengue looking for warning signs re <clears throat> reassure the parents paracetamol right dose good another second indication for or other than diarrhea uh, dengue ask mother to measure and document you know possible refer the child in the right time every doctor follow their own pathway that ramalraj follows have a rubber stamp in which he put the 10 points child parents has to look at it that the council i just talked to them because they see twice a day council makes a table in the letter pad itself and give it to the parents to fill up and bring the intake output chart if you when you are following the child shows peripheric spots needs careful monitoring may the admission if the child is showing a iron subpalar in see of redness like this probably returning wellness very happily we can continue treatment in op treatments secondary care hospital 8 year old girl and day 5 child is uh, became febrile day 6 child alert but dull tender hepatomegaly so child is hospital in the smaller hospital oral fluids encouraged rather than iv fluids dengue monitoring chart you see the trend of the investigation gradually fall into unfortunately the hematocrit did not go beyond 46 platelet count did not go down by 5000 55000 so child was managed well in the smaller hospital so g symptom settled in the day of illness remain hemodynamically stable throughout did not develop any hemorrhage or fluid leak we feel the dorsal speed is the dorsal speed is well felt you, you believe that either jesus christ or allah or vengada dilapadi is standing nearby the child will definitely survive whatever the investigation so dorsal speed is a single clue to say that child is doing well or not but counseling of course counseling is a very very difficult job generally tell them that it is a well child this is caused by virus there is no specific treatment repeated examination and oral fluid is the only choice first 5 days are non threatening diseases non threatening period 6 7 8 are the dangerous days so when the fever subsides don't be happy that is a time we have to see the doctor frequently i used to compare the cyclone with the dengue as long as the ramadan say that cyclone is about 400 km from chennai coast we need not worry we will drink coffee and looking at the tv and watch when the cyclone crosses our coast only we will have the all the impact so critical phase is something similar to that the two types of transport i just this is referral one is a passive transport the child was referred to us on sixth day of illness came by a car he came in hypotensive shock and respiratory distress massive pleural fluid received platelets blood transfusion the referral hospital and he was ventilated and died within 6 hours another is active and uh, ideal referral is pre referral discussion talk to the place where the child has to be uh, transported transport in the ambulance oxygen the pain circuit saturation monitor accompanied doctor and nurse accompanied resuscitation bag available one more slide only so pain circuit is a very useful when we transport the child because pain circuit in a child with fluid overload and respiratory distress if you are transporting the child up Bain circuit will provide both oxygen as well as the positive pressure. So by the time the child reaches the referral hospital, the child will not be bad. In fact, even may improve. To conclude, ascertain the child has dengue. Use pulse assessment for physiologic status in every child. It takes only two minutes. OPR IP. Use the chart PD triple score which we have formed. We can even give the feedback to us. Safe home treatment or safe transport. That is the one who is going to save the child. This is a nice problem. You are not given any problem without the power to solve it. That's what God assures. God or the science assures us. It is not a problem. It's a truth. 1996, we had the first epidemic of dengue in India. That is the beginning of dengue epidemic. 1992, pulse course was started in Chennai. So God prepared us. Not only God, Madam is sitting here. She was the first coordinator of uh, pulse coordinator. So we all the pediatricians trained in assessing the pulse, transferring the pulse knowledge. Four years earlier to the first epidemic of dengue. That is the science and that is the benevolence of God. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful presentation. However, times we listen to Tangavel, sir, every day we'll be learning with his lecture because I am traveling with him since 1992, where I also underwent pulse course. Such a wonderful. person thank you sir 
now the stage is open for question and answer so it is now open for discussions